and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lucas podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Many patients have thyroid antibodies, but normal thyroid blood tests and no signs or symptoms of thyroid disease. A positive ANA test does not always indicate a systemic autoimmune disease, such as lupus. It may be due to a number of conditions including Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Gray's disease. Welcome back to another episode of My Story, Living with Lupus. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join us for another episode. So grab your cup of coffee your cup of tea, and to those who are listening late at night, grab your favorite glass of wine and join the conversation. It's all about Hashimoto disease and the lupus connection. The Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendricks Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness. See one, reach one, educate one to empower the masses, giving hope and empowering those who suffer from chronic illness. You can reach the foundation at 313-303-921. One seven, or visit their website at https semicolon forward slash forward slash cemph foundation dot com. This is a five hundred one c three organization. No one should live in lack.
According to estimates, about 6% of patients with lupus also have hypothyroidism and 1% has hyperthyroidism. Hashimoto disease is the most common form of hypothyroidism in patients with lupus. This finding does not come as a surprise because both conditions are autoimmune diseases with a common etiology. Lupus is a systemic autoimmune disease that can target almost any part of the body, especially the joints, lungs, heart, skin, blood, kidneys, and brain. But in Hashimoto's, the immune system attacks only the thyroid. However, a lack of thyroid hormones can affect all bodily functions and any organs. As a result, when lupus and thyroid disease coexist, it can have a much bigger negative impact on your body. Many symptoms of both disorders can overlap and drive each other, making the diagnosis and treatment even more difficult. It can take years for Hashimoto disease and lupus to develop and progress to the stage when a person can be diagnosed with a standard testing. This can lead to a missed or delayed diagnosis and treatment or being labeled as borderline. A timely diagnosis is very important because the longer a person remains undiagnosed and not treated, the greater the damage to the affected organs become and more difficult to deal with in time. You know, one reason why I brought this up It's because I myself, it's a possibility, may have Hashimoto disease. That's right. I went to the um, rheumatologist and um, took blood work, a running test, And I'm a little swollen around in the neck area, but I have to go for a ultrasound of the thyroid to see exactly if the thyroid is damaged. As I explained in a previous episode on the endocrine system, We have two thyroids. One thyroid sits in front of the neck, and there's one behind it, which is called the parathyroid. So right now I'm going through testing to see exactly what is going on and if the thyroid has been damaged. Now, when we come back, I'll explain lupus and the Hashimoto coexistence. So stay right with us. Ophthalmology Associates, PC, Doctors Berman and Dr. Zuckerbrod. Treating diseases of the eye and eye surgery. You can reach them at 
If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. question for you. Has your rheumatologist ever diagnosed you with poly, poly, excuse me, polyautoimmunity? Now, polyautoimmunity is the presence of more than two autoimmune diseases in one patient, is known as multiple autoimmune syndrome better known as MASS. In fact, it is not uncommon for both SLE and Hashimoto patients to have other autoimmune diseases and develop polyautoimmunity. For example, people with Hashimoto's are 50% risk to develop one or more autoimmune conditions during their lives. Antibodies are used as one of the diagnostic criteria for many autoimmune conditions. In the case of Hashimoto's disease, TPO and or TG thyroid antibodies often become elevated while in lupus ANA antibodies are present in up to 96% of patients. Several research studies show that up to 35% of patients with Hashimoto's also have a presence of ANA antibodies, which means that SLE and Hashimoto's are very likely to share a common underlying immunogenic mechanism. Some patients, well, let me put it this way, some lupus drugs can induce Hashimoto's in susceptible individuals. Many lupus drugs target the immune system, and as a result, the majority of people with lupus are treated with immune modulating or immunosuppressive medications. While this type of treatment can provide many benefits, immune modulations can trigger another autoimmune condition. Furthermore, a restoration of balance may be difficult to achieve because insufficient or excessive cell activation achieved with immune modulating drugs can predispose to autoimmunity. Now, Hashimoto thyroiditis has been considered to be a TH1 dominant autoimmune condition when Th2 part of the immune system is suppressed. While SLE is a disease in which Th2 cells predominate, lupus patients with class 4 lupus nephritis show a strong predominance of Th1. Basically, this means if the immune system is pushed too hard and too far from Th2 into Th1 zone, it can trigger the development of another autoimmune disease like Hashimoto thyroiditis, which is Th1 predominant. Now, a direct connection between lupus and thyroid toxicity. You see, the coexistence of lupus and thyroid toxicosis can have different expressions, 
in some patients, thyroid tacosis preceded the onset of SLE. In others, the signs of SLE appear first, and in some people, both disease begin simultaneously. But further evidence of the close association between SLE and Hashimoto's is that the discontinuation of lupus therapy has been reported to be associated with a relapse of thyroid toxicity or Hashi toxicosis. Other studies reported that there is the possibility of drug-induced SLE in some patients treated with antithyroid drugs. Many symptoms of lupus and Hashimoto's can be very similar. However, some doctors might not think to check for thyroid conditions in a person with lupus. There is often a presumption of a lupus flare or potentially a reaction to a lupus drug when in actuality may be another issue such as thyrotoxicity, or hashitoxicosis. Now, estrogen dominance as a trigger. Estrogens have a direct influence on the susceptibility to both Hashimoto's and SLE. As evidenced by predominance of both conditions in women and onset during major hormonal shifts during puberty, pregnancy, and around menopause. In addition, high estrogen and low DHEA tend to increase the symptoms. The inability to detoxify estrogen properly by the liver, which is typically in people who have a combination of Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism, needs to be considered as part of the puzzle. Now, is there a genetic predisposition? A genetic predisposition is a necessary precondition for a person to develop a particular health condition. Lupus, thyroid autoimmune disease are not an exception. The bottom line is that if you don't have specific genes that are linked to lupus or Hashimoto's, you cannot develop these health conditions. On the other hand, having genetic predisposition doesn't mean that you get a particular disease because other factors like environmental triggers, infections, bacteria, viruses increase the possibility. An interplay between all of them creates a ground for an autoimmune disease to develop while having just one of them present is not enough. You see, lupus tends to occur in families. Siblings of SLE patients have a risk of about 2% to develop this disease as well. However, only 25% of even identical twins with SLE are concordant for disease and therefore about 75% of cases are where one twin has SLE and one does not. Now, recent research studies identified a group of genes that were linked 
to Hashimoto's and 50 genetic associations with lupus based on the genome Y genetic association study, better known as GWAS. Interestingly enough, some of them overlap. For example, HLA group of genes seems to be common in both Hashimoto's disease and lupus patients. However, it also depends on a genotype. In some cases, HLA genes are more highly related to lupus-associated antibodies than to lupus itself. While in others having Pacific HLA genotypes increases the risk of lupus to falls. More research is needed. Your DNA could play a critical role in developing lupus treatments. So what can you do? An important aspect to understand is that if you have multiple autoimmune conditions, like a combination of Hashimoto disease and lupus, it means active systemic autoimmunity is present. The very first step you need to take in order to stop the progression of autoimmune disease and improve your symptoms is to close the door of systemic autoimmunity. Now, here is how to stop the per- to prevent autoimmune disease. Get optimal thyroid treatment. A proper thyroid treatment can not only improve hypothyroid and Hashimoto symptoms, but also ease lupus symptoms. As I mentioned before, many lupus and Hashimoto symptoms like profound fatigue, hair loss, poor blood circulation in fingers and toes, insomnia, joint and muscle pain are overlapping and can be caused by both conditions. When lupus and thyroid problems coexist, in one person, often it is difficult to say which of them contributes to the same symptoms, whether lupus or hypothyroidism cause, for example, fatigue. If you have thyroid problems, they need to be treated. However, having your TSH within normal reference range may not be enough to improve your symptoms. This reference range is too wide and actually TSH test alone doesn't give any information whether you have Hashimoto's or not. Your goal is to get an optimum hypothyroid treatment that allows you to achieve a complete or partial improvement of some symptoms. Then you can focus on remaining on the remaining symptoms that can be solely due to lupus. Lupus affects everyone differently by targeting the kidneys, brain, heart, skin, and liver. In fact, a properly functioned thyroid gland can positively affect the function of these organs and improve it to some degree, even if they are affected by lupus. Consider taking genetic tests. Nowadays, genetic testing 
has become widely available and can provide you with information that can be used for health risk assessment and bring more clarity to treatment of polyautoimmunity. Genetic-based therapies have a big future and sound very promising. However, the major challenge in working on new therapies for SLE is the difficulty in conducting large-scale clinical trials and research studies in this highly complex disease. Consider taking a genetic test and learn how your genetic can be related to your lupus and Hashimoto's. As for myself, as I stated before in previous episodes, my lupus is genetic. I have several autoimmune disease and whatever the test results show they show if the thyroid needs to come out it will come out if I'm at a point where I can be placed on medications for the thyroid I will do that. The way that I have been feeling recently, the fatigue has gotten really worse. The hair loss has gotten worse. The joints and muscle pains have gotten intense. My cardiologist, as I stated before, told me to stop taking all of my medications, and he referred me to an endocrinologist, and um, I went to the endocrinologist, like I stated, Testing is being done, and these are the cards that I have been dealt. I told my family, it had to have been about three or four months ago, that I needed to go see an endocrinologist. And when I went back for my follow-up appointment, um, the cardiologist, before I could mention it, He was on it and said, I'm referring you to an endocrinologist. Something is going on that is not adding up. I keep gaining weight no matter how much I work out. The weight gain, I wouldn't say it's tremendous, but I'm at the heaviest that I have been in a long time, and the weight has to go. So, when we come back, I'll close out with my remarks. So, stay with me. I just want to say thank you to all of my listeners from the United States all the way to Africa. I appreciate you. As I've stated all the time, there is more to this illness called lupus than lupus. You know, there are several things in life we cannot choose. No one told us that life would be easy or it would be fair. 
So you have to play the best game you can with the cards you've been dealt. In point of fact, life may be just a shaky expectation in as much as everyone realizes that the cards have often been shuffled. Well in advance. Well, I'm sitting at the table with my cards at hand. Will I fold or will I throw them in? I will not do either one. You see, I'm going to sit here and play the cards that I've been dealt. And I will be victorious. Thank you for joining me for another episode of my story, Living with Lupus. And yes, this is my story because no one can tell my story but me. You have a most peaceful, positive, and also blessed weekend. I'm Susan Hendricks, your host. I'll see you next week for another episode.